us continue with what we were doing in the previous lecture I am trying to prove this theorem that if x is an affine variety that the function field of x is just the quotient field of the affine coordinate ring of x which is the same as the ring of regular functions on x and if, x, if y is a projective variety uh, then the quotient the function field of y is uh, actually the degree 0 part of the homogeneous localization at 0 okay and uh, of course uh, uh, s y localized at 0 uh, 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 itself will have a being a homogeneous localization will have a gradation and it is a degree 0 part of that if you take the degree 0 part you get a field okay uh, right now uh, mm, I will explain more about this soon so but the, so this is the point the point is that we define something in a geometric okay and then we try to capture it using commutative algebra I mean that is the translation from algebraic geometry commutative, commutative algebra and that and what this is what this the theorem tells you what that this translation means for uh, the function field okay if it is an affine variety then the function field is the quotient field of the affine coordinate ring which is a projective variety then it is given by this uh, which also produces a field okay so uh, so let us try to prove that and uh, uh, and then uh, I can use this to go and show uh, uh, also that there are no non constant regular functions on a projective variety okay uh, so so here is a proof so we start with x uh, uh, and a fine variety uh, x is uh, irreducible closed in some an and uh, well ax is you have ax is just by definition this is a fine coordinate ring of x this is just the ring of polynomials uh, in n variables namely the polynomial functions on this affine space restricted to x okay so this is just this is by definition a of an divided by the ideal of x which is just uh, and a of an is just a, can be identified at polynomials in n variables uh, over k the ring of polynomials in n variables over k these variables x i's are the coordinate functions on the affine space the n coordinate functions and here is uh, here is your uh, a x and by the way since x is affine this is the same as ox these two are one and the same okay and uh, uh, what I am trying to show is I am trying to show that uh, uh, kx is the same as the quotient field of ax all right so uh, yeah so uh, So you know we, we, we already have that ox sits inside kx this is something that we have already seen okay in fact uh, any regular function is also a rational function uh, after all kx is supposed to be consist is supposed to be represented by regular functions on open sets and ox is regular functions defined on all of x and all of x is also an open subset of x okay therefore ox uh, is a subring of kx okay this is something that we have already seen we have we have, we have I have mentioned it here ox sits inside any local ring and that further sits inside kx which is the function field of x and uh, on the other hand uh, ox is the same as ax okay and ax has its quotient field q of ax okay uh, any any integral domain uh, sits inside its quotient field which is the quotient field is the same as field of fractions any integral domain sits inside its quotient field okay and uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a property which says that you know the quotient field is the smallest field in which the uh, the quotient field of an integral dom domain is the smallest field in which the integral domain sits okay uh, 
that is also called the universal property of uh, the quotient field or field of fractions and therefore uh, since the since uh, qax is a quotient field of ax which is the same as ox it is the smallest field which contains ox and since kx is a field which contains ox okay uh, this has to be contained in that therefore you know you get you get a unique ring homomorphism from here into this okay. So this ring homomorphism is a unique ring homomorphism uh, which it just expresses the fact that an integral domain sits inside its field of fractions or quotient field and the quotient field is the smallest field uh, which contains that integral domain. So if some other field contains that integral domain then this quotient that there is an isomorphic copy of this quotient field inside that field okay and that is what is given by the image of this map which is an injective map and in fact it is it is pretty easy to write out what this map is. See the what is the quotient field of Ax you see uh, Ax is given by polynomials f and g uh, Ax is just Ox, uh, uh, Ox is regular functions but here the regular functions are, rest, are just restrictions of polynomials okay. So uh, you take an element of Ax uh, it is a polynomial modulo this ideal okay so if you can you can write it as f bar okay so if i take a polynomial in n variables uh, namely f uh, then there is this quotient which is going modulo the ideal of x and f goes to f bar which is a an element here okay and uh, of course f bar is the uh, coset f plus ix okay so you have this f bar so this quotient field will consist of things like this there will be things of the form f bar by g bar okay. So because of uh, the field of fractions of an integral domain is consists of all fractions okay quotients of two elements of the integral domain with the, with the denominator element not being 0 okay. So the g bar cannot be 0. So this is how an element here will look like okay and what is the element to which you will send it after all. Uh, uh, f bar by g bar if you think of it as uh, after all as a function this is just f by g okay after all f bar if uh, what is f bar in ax what does it mean it is simply restriction of the polynomial f which is a, which defines a function on this affine space to the subset x. So geometrically f bar is actually f restricted to x okay f bar is what you get algebraically it is an it is a coset it is an it is read off it, it is reading f modulo ix but geometrically what is it it is simply restricting the polynomial f to this close subset x the subset x. So you know so if you take f bar by g bar you are just actually restricting f bar you are you are just evaluating f by g and where does f by g make sense where g does not where g is, does not vanish okay and uh, where g does not vanish is an open set it is an open set in the affine space so if it intersects x you will get an open subset of x okay. So the moral of the story is that this will it will define this uh, 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 x intersection dg comma uh, f by g. So this is I have this element which makes sense here. So what you must understand is that you see dg is the basic open set in affine space where the polynomial g does not vanish okay dg is just uh, the complement of uh, from uh, of z of g which is a 0 set of g okay the 0 set of g is a 0 set uh, set of points where g vanishes okay and mind you that is a uh, uh, you know that is a hypersurface okay uh, of course g uh, uh, g need not be irreducible but uh, even if if you factor g into its irreducible factors then this zg will be union of those z of those gi's which where the gi's are the irreducible factors of g and each zgi will be a hypersurface okay uh, which means a co dimension 1 sub variety okay that is uh, n minus 1 dimensional closed sub variety of an okay. So this zg will be a union of hypersurfaces and its complement is dg which is a basic open set mind you this is a basic open set in the affine space and this is itself isomorphic to an affine variety okay by the Rabinovich trick this is isomorphic to a closed subset of a n plus 1 okay. 
So, uh, so this dg is an open subset and x intersection dg is an open subset of x and there f by g makes sense right and uh, 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 so this is how you define this map okay and um, uh, so uh, that is how this map is defined this is how you will define this map naturally you can check that this here I have defined this map in a very geometric way by thinking of everything as functions but then I told you this map also comes because of the universal property of uh, the uh, field of fractions of an integral domain okay you can check that there also the definition is the same okay. So, uh, this map that you get either geometrically or via commutative algebra it is one and the same map alright and uh, so all this tells you that the quotient field of Ax is certainly a subfield of Kx okay what I am to prove is that they are equal okay. So, what I will have to show is that I have to show this this map is surjective alright and how do I show that this surjective well uh, take uh, uh, so you know let me call this map as something uh, well okay let me call this alpha. So, uh, alpha is an injective k algebra homomorphism, k algebra homomorphism. Well, actually, it is more actually, you know, the quotient field of Ax contains k, quotient field of Ax is a field, it contains k, the, the, the scalars uh, they are all thought of as constant functions mind you k is sitting inside here k is uh, k every element of k defines a regular function namely constant functions. So, it is the same k here. So, the const the constant functions are there and this is a field which contains this uh, smaller field. So, this is a field extension and this is again another field extension ok k x is a bigger field extension in fact we want to show that these two fields are the same ok. Uh, why is alpha surjective? because you know uh, uh, how does an element in kx look like uh, uh, and any element of kx is of the form uh, well is of the form u comma f u comma phi where uh, well phi is in ou and u inside x is open non empty right. I mean this is how uh, we define uh, kx it is equivalence classes of pairs consisting of an open set and a regular function on that open set ok and this open set has to be taken to be an open set inside x right and uh, but then you see uh, a little bit of ins part will tell you that uh, this is the image of an element uh, from the quotient field of Ax and what is that element is very easy to guess by just concentrating attention at a single point. So, you know uh, if uh, x belongs small x is a point of u inside x ok uh, then uh, phi looks like f by g right uh, with uh, x belonging to dg I mean this is how a regular function is defined a regular function is something that locally surrounding each point looks like a quotient of polynomials. So, uh, phi looks like f by g means the function uh, phi uh, from u to uh, k can be identified with the function f by g which is also defined on a open neighborhood of the point x to k and of course that open neighborhood should be a neighborhood where g does not vanish. So, it has to be in dg ok of course x is in dg intersection x which is an open in a neighborhood of small x in capital x right this is just the definition of regular function ok. But then uh, but then uh, you have uh, f bar by g bar this element if you take f bar by g bar that is certainly an element in the quotient field of Ax certainly and alpha of f bar by g bar will be 
uh, you will get this uh, as I have defined this map alpha it is just going to be x uh, it is going to be x intersection dg uh, comma f by g this is what I am going to get okay. But then notice that this is the same as uh, uh, well uh, uh, and of course you know uh, but this is the same as uh, uh, w f by g these two are the same where uh, w uh, is the open neighbourhood of small x in x intersection dg where phi is equal to f by g see after all phi looks like f by g locally at every point so I am taking only one point it is enough to take just one point take call that point a small x so there for this point small x I have a an open neighbourhood w okay which is in x intersection dg okay and there on that w phi is the same as f by g okay that means you know uh, uh, so w so f by g makes sense on w phi also makes sense on w and so this is the same as w comma phi okay and that is the same as uh, your u comma phi because that is the equals this is w comma phi restricted to w so I should write phi restricted to w I mean the restrictions are obvious let me not write it okay so so in other words so this implies alpha is this alpha is subject and you are done thus the uh, the quotient field of x is the same as well uh, this isomorphism is alpha as I have defined it it is a quotient field of the function field of x kx is the same as the quotient field of ax okay which is the same as quotient field of ox because ox is the same as a same as ax okay. So it is very simple to get the function field of a affine variety simply take its coordinate ring and take the quotient field that is it okay that proves the first part okay. Now we are going to prove the second part which is about the which is the projective case right. So how do you prove that so uh, uh, so let uh, you start with y be irreducibly closed in pn pm okay y is a projective variety and I am trying to now calculate the rash the function field of y alright and uh, uh, well uh, then you know of course the, uh, the 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 projective space is a quotient of the punctured affine space above and uh, and you know the 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 homogeneous coordinate ring of the uh, whole projective space is the same as the affine coordinate ring of the uh, affine space above and this is just polynomials in m plus 1 variables okay and uh, the uh, the homogeneous coordinate ring of y is just this modulo ideal of y where ideal of y is the uh, is all those homogeneous polynomials which vanish on y so this is i h i will put a subscript h to just remind you that it is a it is a homogeneous ideal it is a ideal generated by homogeneous elements namely it is generated by all those homogeneous polynomials in these m plus 1 variables which vanish throughout the locus y okay. Uh, now we have seen uh, in earlier lectures that uh, uh, 
you know that the projective space has an affine cover consisting of m plus 1 uh, open subsets which are each isomorphic to affine m space okay. So you know we have uh, uh, p m k is union of u i i equal to 0 to m u i is just the uh, uh, complement of the uh, 0 set of x i okay this is a 0 set in uh, this is a projective 0 set this is a 0 set in p m each x i is a homogeneous polynomial of degree 1 its 0 set uh, will define a closed subset of positive space it will it is called the hyperplane projective hyper it is called the projective hyper hyperplane defined by x i vanishing of the x i and its complement is this u i okay and these u i is these u i are all open sets and we have seen that there are isomorphisms phi i from u i to uh, a m okay there are isomorphisms like this and you know how these isomorphisms are written uh, u i corresponds to uh, all those points with projective homogeneous coordinates with ith coordinate not 0. So what you do is if you take a coordinate like this which is written as lambda not through lambda m with colons to indicate that it is a common that it can be uh, scaled by a common ratio these are the homogeneous coordinates you simply send it to uh, lambda not by lambda i lambda m by lambda i where you omit lambda i by lambda i <coughs> this is the map this is the map that is defined set theoretically and we proved that this map is an isomorphism of varieties and under the isomorphism of varieties this translates to this is a geometric map and it translates uh, to commutative algebra to an isomorphism of of, uh, of the affine coordinate rings namely a of a m k uh, so this is by pull back this is pull back of regular functions uh, and give me a regular function here you compose with this you get a regular function here that is a map like this the opposite direction uh, and this is uh, this is the k algebra isomorphism this is this is of course isomorphism varieties okay and uh, here I will get O of u i and we proved that what this O of u i is is actually <coughs> uh, it is the coordinate uh, ring of p n p m uh, localized at x i and then you take degree 0 part okay so we prove this so we have proved this in a in an earlier lecture right and now uh, this is the picture with the whole projective space now you rewrite the picture that corresponds to this closed subset y okay so what you will get is if you intersect with y you will get y also as a union of i equal to 0 to m y intersection u y okay so uh, y is covered by uh, this uh, y intersection u i and each y intersection u i is an irreducible closed subset of u i and under the isomorphism phi i it will give you an irreducible closed subset of affine space so it will correspond to an affine variety. So uh, this just expresses the projective variety as a union of at most m plus 1 uh, affine varieties so uh, you know we used this to show that any uh, any projective variety is a union of affine varieties and we later on proved that uh, any quasi affine variety is also a union of affine varieties and therefore we proved that any variety is a finite union of affine varieties so the affine varieties are the building blocks of all varieties anyway so uh, you have this and uh, what happens is that uh, what what happens to this isomorphism you this y intersection ui uh, uh, you will have an isomorphism uh, phi i uh, the phi i will give you an isomorphism with uh, phi i of y intersection ui which is a variety there and what will happen is that uh, the uh, and if you 
this if will translate if you go to community of algebra this will translate to a of uh, the fine coordinate ring of phi i of y intersection u i which is an which is a fine sub variety phi i of y intersection u i is a reducible closed sub variety of a m okay and again this is phi i star which is full back of regular functions by phi i okay this is also a k algebra isomorphism and what you are going to get here is the uh, ring of regular functions of y on y intersection u i and you know we proved that this is this can uh, this can in fact be identified with uh, s of y uh, you localize at x i and then uh, take the degree 0 part okay. So, uh, so it is this thing when you intersect with y you get this alright and uh, now uh, now here is a point the point is well you know k y is the same as k of y intersection u i if y intersection u i is not 0 is, is not, not not empty okay because I told you that the the function field is not going to change if you go to a non empty open subset y intersection u i is a non empty open subset of y I mean of course I am choosing an i such that y intersection u i is non empty open subset of y if some y intersection u j is empty I do not choose that j okay that is certainly at least one i such that y intersects u i okay and you take that y intersection u i that is an open subset of y non empty open subset of y it has the same function field but then k of y intersection u i is the same as k of uh, phi i of y intersection u i uh, uh, this is equal to this because y intersection u i and phi of y intersection u i are isomorphic because phi i is an isomorphism but then uh, so this is the this is the function field of phi i of y intersection u i phi i of y intersection u i is uh, 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 phi i of y intersection u i is a is a sub variety of am and uh, so it is affine it is an affine variety and we have just now proved we have just now proved here in the first part that if you have an affine variety then the rash then the function field is given by taking the quotient field of the field of uh, uh, quotient field of the ring of regular functions namely the, uh, the, uh, uh, the affine coordinate ring. So this is the same as quotient field of the affine coordinate ring of phi i of y intersection u i. And of course here you know when I put equality maybe I should put here isomorphism because I am using the fact that if two varieties are isomorphic then their function fields are isomorphic. So I have uh, this isomorphism between y intersection u i and phi i of y intersection u i these are so these two are isomorphic varieties isomorphic varieties have isomorphic function fields okay. So that is a fact that is uh, pretty easy to uh, 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 understand I, I I did not state it but let me try, try to write that down here suppose you have x so let me put you some other notation uh, uh, yeah so if x1 is a variety and x2 is a variety and phi is an isomorphism of varieties then I have phi star uh, the pullback of functions uh, will induce an isomorphism of kx2 with kx1. So, if two varieties are isomorphic then their function fields are of course isomorphic. The, the idea is very simple because you see if you give me uh, an element of k x2 it is going to be a rational it is going to be it is a rational function. So, it is a regular function and open subset of x2 and if you pull it back you will get a regular function on the inverse image of that open subset in x1 and that is going to define an element of k x1 and you can check that this is an isomorphism. It is a trivial check that if two varieties are isomorphic then their function fields are isomorphic okay. So uh, uh, an isomorphism of varieties induces an isomorphism of function fields in the opposite direction always the isomorphism uh, at the level of <coughs> regular functions or at the level of local rings or at the level of function fields okay all isomorphisms that involve 
functions either locally or globally they are all induced by pullback that is something that you should not forget okay. So uh, isomorphic varieties have isomorphic function fields and since y intersection u i is isomorphic to phi i of y intersection u i they have isomorphic function fields but the quotient field of phi i of y intersection u i is the quotient field of its affine coordinate ring okay that is what we have seen in the first part and then but this is the same as well uh, 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 you know uh, so this is the same as quotient field of this is isomorphic to the quotient field of O of uh, y intersection u i because uh, again uh, if two rings are isomorphic if two integral domains are isomorphic then their quotient fields are isomorphic. So uh, uh, the quotient field of this is isomorphic to the quotient field of this because these two integral domains are isomorphic uh, but I have already identified O of y intersection u i with S y localized so, so this is just the quotient field of S y localized x i take this degree 0 part and now I want you to check it is a very simple check in commutative algebra that this is the same as simply S y localized at 0 and take the degree 0 part okay. So uh, it is the last equality that has to be checked and it is uh, uh, it is kind of uh, it is very very easy to check okay because you know so, so this is the only thing that needs to be checked this is the only thing that needs to be checked. So you must understand what I am doing here, here I am using the fact that if two varieties are isomorphic their function fields are isomorphic and here I am using the fact that if two rings are isomorphic, two integral domains are isomorphic then their quotient fields are isomorphic and then I come to this okay and uh, uh, yeah so uh, how does one prove this last equality that is also a little bit of commutative algebra. Um, so let me rub this part so that I can continue. So uh, well so what is uh, what is S y localized at x i is just uh, it is just elements of the form f by x i to the power of r uh, equivalence classes like this where f is in f is a polynomial in these uh, m plus 1 variables and uh, r is uh, greater than or equal to 0. I mean this is what it is and the square bracket is equivalence classes okay this is for the localization is s y localized at x y is just invert x y okay invert x y means you are allowing denominators with positive uh, integral powers of x y right and uh, what is x s x s y x y x i localized at 0 is well it is such things which with with uh, a homogeneous degree 0 which means that uh, you know uh, the numerator should also be homogeneous uh, denominator should also be homogeneous and uh, they should be homogeneous of <coughs> uh, the same degree so that the when you take the uh, difference of uh, degrees it is 0 okay. So this is this will consist of things of the form uh, uh, well uh, sums of finite sums finite sums and of course <coughs> also finite products for that matter uh, well <coughs> I could I could simply write it uh, instead of saying all that I could simply write it uh, as f by x i to the power of r such that f is homogeneous of degree r this is a degree 0 part right and uh, of course the degree 0 part sits inside this and uh, uh, what about what about this so that is uh, 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 and you know if I take the quotient field of this okay this is an integral domain alright and I take its quotient field 
So, if I take quotient field of uh, uh, S y x i at 0 this is what this will sit inside and this will consist of quotients of things like this. So, it will be something like f by x i power r divided by some g by x i power s it will be quotients like this where uh, f g homogeneous of degree uh, uh, r and s respectively this is what it will be all right if I take the quotient field of that right. And uh, well uh, and what you can understand is that you know I can identify uh, I can identify an element like this uh, with uh, uh, the element f times x i power s by uh, g times x i power r ok. This if you just divide these two uh, you know very uh, uh, naively this is what you will get ok and, and the numerator will have degree r plus s denominator will have degree r plus s. So, this is a quotient of homogeneous polynomials uh, of the same degree ok. So, what you are going to get is uh, you, you are going to get an element here ok. So, uh, see this belongs to s y uh, localized at 0 degree 0 part I will tell you what this means see s y localized at 0 is is equal to uh, 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 is gotten by inverting all non zero homogeneous polynomials ok. This is the notation is ring localized at a prime ideal ok. So, uh, the the point I what I want you to notice is that this is hope this is homogeneous localization. See normally when you localize a ring at a prime ideal you are supposed to invert everything outside that prime ideal ok. But here it is homogeneous localization what you are doing is you are not ever inverting every non zero uh, polynomial, but you are inverting only non zero homogeneous polynomials. The reason why you are inverting only homogeneous polynomials is because only then this localization will get a gradation ok. If I mind you this sits inside s y localized at 0. So, you know uh, 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 this when I write like this this is the usual localization 0 is a prime ideal and ring localized at a prime ideal is invert everything outside that prime ideal. So, this is actually the quotient field of s y this is quotient field of s y this is very big this is very big because this consists of quotients uh, where in the denominator you have put any polynomial which is not 0. In fact, you 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 are inverting even non-zero homogeneous polynomials. Even not, I mean, uh, sorry, you are in in fact you are invi inverting even non-homogeneous polynomials. All right, but this is smaller. You are inverting only homogeneous non-zero polynomials. Only those homogeneous polynomials which are non-zero, you are inverting them. So this gives you a uh, subring of this, which is the quotient field. Okay, uh, but this is graded because the gradation can be defined as degree of the numerator minus degree of the denominator because the denominator consists only a homogeneous polynomial which is non zero because you are here you are inverting only the non zero homogeneous polynomials. And in this if you take the degree 0 part that is what this is. So, this consists of exactly elements like this ok this consists of exactly elements which are given by numerator uh, uh, homogeneous polynomial uh, denominator also homogeneous polynomial they are both of the same degree ok. And therefore, you can see that this is certainly sitting inside uh, uh, this homogeneous localization degree 0 part to which this belongs and that is the map you send this guy to this guy alright. And you can check that this map is injective alright. What we are trying to say is that this is also surjective that is what we want to prove we want to show that this there is an isomorphism between this and this ok. I have written equality, but in most cases <coughs> the equality is just isomorphism 
uh, with proper identification an isomorphism can be treated as an equality. I mean if you think of this function as the same as this okay as a function then you get equality. But if you prefer to write it like this with all these weird brackets here and another weird bracket here if you want okay then the you can you can think of it as a formal isomorphism okay. But if you just think of them as functions there is just equality right. So, uh, so this is sitting inside this and conversely you know you can check that uh, if you give me any element here it comes from an element here okay. So, uh, 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 so the only fact that needs to prove be proved is that this is surjective all right and how does one show that it is very very simple conversely you know see if you want let me call this map as uh, uh, alpha sub i let me call this map as alpha sub i. Uh, so, I just want to say that uh, uh, alpha sub i is uh, well and uh, and <coughs> uh, injective uh, k algebra uh, homomorphism. Of course, you know see the fact is that this is a non-zero homomorphism from a field and you know a non-zero homomorphism from a field is always injective. So, you do not have to worry about verifying the injectivity because the source is a field all right being the quotient field of this integral domain all right. I have to only worry about the surjectivity. So, uh, how do you get surjectivity? Uh, surjectivity is also pretty easy well uh, take an element here how does an element here look like? It will look like a quotient of uh, two homogeneous polynomials of the same degree all right. So, uh, uh, take uh, f by g uh, take a quotient in uh, this which means that uh, f and g are homogeneous of uh, <coughs> the same degree and uh, of course, g is not 0 because whatever you put in the denominator whatever you invert is not 0. So, uh, any element uh, here looks like this and I want to tell you that this element actually comes from an element here okay and uh, uh, that is perhaps uh, uh, pretty easy uh, you can easily see that I just have to divide by the same power of x i. Uh, as the degree of f which is the same as degree of g. So, it is uh, it is obvious. So, uh, you can see that. So, it is surjective obviously uh, So, uh, clearly uh, this element f by x i degree f degree of f divided by g by x i degree g this element this fellow is in s y uh, localized at x i degree 0 and and <coughs> its image under alpha i is f by g okay. So, the, that 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 implies that alpha i is an isomorphism is surjective hence an isomorphism okay. As functions the if you consider everything as functions then uh, these two, these two are not just isomorphic they can even treat them as equal okay. So, uh, so this proves the other fact that k y is nothing but take the homogeneous coordinate ring of y uh, you localize at uh, you take homogeneous localization at 0 and then take the degree 0 part this is an isomorphism okay. So, that proves the theorem. 
So, uh, so it is very clear that uh, 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 you can you know how to write commutative algebraically what the function field is for an affine variety for a, for a projective variety it helps you with calculations ok. And uh, 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 there is a there is another fact that uh, that comes with th there is another fact that comes with uh, that comes with in connection with these two diagrams and the fact is the following the fact is that of course the function field uh, is uh, an extension of the base field small k ok and the fact is that the transcendence degree of the function field O of a variety over small k will give you the dimension of the variety ok. So, that is also true so you know so here is a so that is a very very uh, well um, uh, corollary corollary is uh, if x is a fine dimension of x this is topological dimension of x is the dimension cruel of ax this is also the dimension cruel of ax uh, at mx where x uh, of the local ring this is also equal to uh, transcendence degree uh, over small k of the quotient field of ax which is the same as uh, transcendence degree over small k uh, of the function field of x and mind you uh, mind you that this guy is the same as as uh, this is isomorphic to o x small x and this guy is isomorphic to o x. So, this is uh, this is one corollary. So, you know have you have so many formulas for the uh, di dimension of an affine variety it is either the topological dimension of x or it is the cruel dimension of a x is the ring of polynomials restricted to x ok the or it is also the cruel dimension of the ring o x which is a k algebra ok. Uh, it is also the cruel dimension of a x localized at m x because you know a x localized at m x is the local ring of capital X at small x ok and uh, this is the same as the transcendence degree of the quotient field of this and that is the same as the transcendence degree over k of uh, over small k of capital Kx. So, this is an this is a this is one important um, corollary and uh, uh, if if you have uh, and you know the point is that uh, if it is projective also uh, all these statements are correct except that uh, you do not uh, bring in the uh, global regular functions because uh, as I told you we are going to prove that for a projective variety all the global regular functions are all the only global regular functions are all constants ok. So, if 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 y is projective then you know uh, uh, I will get I will have to forget this ok this is the only thing that I have to throw out but uh, everything else. Uh, uh, everything else can be written. So, let me write that out if uh, y is projective then also you will see that dimension y topological dimension of y is the same as uh, the uh, cruel dimension of the uh, the local ring of y at this point small y and there is also the transcendence degree over small k of the function field of y this is what will happen ok. And uh, so, uh, uh, why is this a corollary of all that we have seen I would explain that and the uh, see we have already proved the topological dimension is the same as cruel dimension of the affine coordinate ring for an affine variety and but you know uh, uh, but then you know uh, if you take the cruel dimension of the local ring ok then you see uh, the cruel dimension of the local ring is just the cruel dimension of this 
okay but the cruel dimension of this uh, is actually the same as the height of this maximal ideal okay see because when you localize at a prime ideal in the local ring you are only the only prime ideals that survive are the prime ideals which are contained in the in the localized prime ideal in the in the prime ideal that you are localizing okay so uh, what is one one thing in commutative algebra that you should remember about localization if you take a ring if you take a commutative ring a and if p is a prime ideal if you go to ap what are the prime ideals in ap the prime ideals in ap are precisely the prime ideals in a which are contained in p by going to ap you are th you are throwing out you are removing all the prime ideals which are outside p which have elements outside p so by going to ap you are actually only focusing attention on prime ideals which contain p so you know the cruel dimension of this uh, thing this is a local ring so the cruel dimension will be it has only one maximal ideal and you know cruel dimension of a ring is just supremum of the heights of all its prime ideals so it will be the height it will be here the biggest ideal is this maximal ideal so the cruel dimension of this ring is the same as the cruel dimension of the the height of this maximal ideal but then this local ring model of this maximal ideal is the is just the base field k okay this uh, uh, ax uh, ax localized at mx modulo uh, mx is just k okay and uh, and the dimension formula will tell you the dimension of k is zero therefore the dimension of ax mod uh, that the, therefore the dimension of ax lo localized at mx is the same as the height of mx okay and uh, 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 but but then that height will be equal to the uh, cruel dimension of ax okay and that is the reason why you get this equality okay and uh, this equality comes because any integral domain and its uh, 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 that uh, if you have a uh, so th so this equality comes because of the fact that you know uh, uh, so this also comes from a formula that I have stated earlier. If you have a finitely generated k algebra, which is an integral domain, then the transcendence degree of the quotient field of that integral domain is the same as the cruel dimension of that uh, of that algebra. Okay, so. Uh, uh, so, so, so if you apply that to AX, you will get that this is equal to this, okay? Because AX is a finitely generated K algebra, which is an integral domain, okay? And it's so its transcendence degree over K has to be equal to the cruel dimension of AX, okay? So that gives this equality, all right? So you don't get this is equal to this; rather, you get this is equal to this, and therefore this is equal to this because these two are equal, okay? And uh, uh, of course, we have proved Q of AX is the same as KX, so this is also equal to the transcendent degree, transcend degree over K of KX. Okay, and the same kind of argument will give you will yield these equalities in the affine case. Okay, and you have to only remember that uh, 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 when you, uh, if you want to do this for Y, it's enough to do it for YI, where YA is an affine piece of Y, which is gotten by intersecting with UI. Okay. And if you do it uh, with a uh, instead of if to do this computation, it's enough to do this computation with y replaced by y intersection ui, which is yi if you want. Okay, and then that case is already covered here. Therefore, this follows. Okay, therefore, that's the proof of this statement. Okay, so I'll stop with that. <laughs>